hanging everybody, welcome to General Hospital MV, my GH after show. We have made it to the end of 2017. Already! I won't lie to you, this whole year has been an absolute blur for me. I can like, kind of think of the stories at the beginning of the year because Tracy left and she was one of my favorite characters and Hayden left and I was so pissed off about that. And then we got a writer switch and then Steve Burton came back and it's been like a roller coaster ever since. I don't know about you guys but for me personally the show has been on fire since the writers switched. These writers hit the ground running with the whole Steve Burton return. Like the story was legitimately good. I was really worried about it initially because it would be so weird to explain certain things, but they've actually handled it pretty well, all things considered. And my next worry is that the other storylines wouldn't be as good, but, like, I'm impressed with the whole show as a whole. Like, it's been great for everyone. The Quartermains are still getting their storylines, and it's going good. We have the whole Charles Street storyline that's been going on, which I'm, like, in love with. I'm still on the fence with certain couples, but I don't hate it. So, like, all in all, this is a good end to the year. So now, let's get into how the show ended for the year. So let's talk about Lulu. She published a story of Mayor Lomax's rigged election, how she shouldn't have won, and that done brought the mayor down. I was a little bummed that we didn't get to see Mayor Lomax on screen when she was brought down, but hey, I'm not complaining. It's been, what, like four years since this happened, so I'm so glad that we finally got some justice for Felicia who, by the way, does not want to be mayor anymore. So Port Charles currently is without a mayor, and Kevin thinks that Laura would be a good candidate, and so do I. I mean, how cool would it be to have Laura Spencer as the mayor of Port Charles? Oh, wait, Laura Collins. Laura decided to change her name. How do you guys feel about that? I'm, uh, like, I, I get it, because, you know, Laura's not really attached to Luke anymore. Even though Luke and Laura are iconic for the show, Luke's gone, and Laura's with Kevin, and it would be kind of a slap in the face for her to keep the Spencer name, like it's her ex-husband's name. Just because her name's changed doesn't mean that she does. And I am truly loving Laura lately, so I am okay with it. I was a fan of her back in the Luke and Laura days, and I'm a fan of her now, so I'm good. I'm good, you guys. But now let's get back to Lulu for a second, because the publisher, Peter August, I think his name? Peter August, am I right? While he was very impressed with Lulu's story, he wants more from her in order to hire her on full time. And the story that he wants her to do is a story on Drew and Sam and Jason and Faison. I don't know how she's going to pull that off, but it'll certainly be interesting to see a Spencer take on Faison again. But on a side note, does anyone feel like Peter August is actually a villain in disguise? I just get that vibe from him. Now let's talk about Maxie and Nathan. Now they are absolutely certain that Lisa Olbrecht, Nathan's mother, is lying about Nathan's father's paternity. That was another storyline that was like during the time of Felicia's mayor that did not get answered. It was dropped just like the mayor storyline. Thank you, Chris and Shelley, for answering questions we've been dying to know. Not that the paternity has been answered yet. Maxie has a plan. She actually went to Valentine and literally just snatched the hair off of his head and left. She wants Amy to do a DNA test to find out who his father is. Now, I don't know if Maxie thinks that Valentine could be Nathan's father. That would be so weird because then his sister is kind of dating his father and that's just, it's a little, it's a little bit messed up. Perhaps she's just trying to find some like Castadine blood and compare it to Nathan's blood to see if Nathan's actually Castadine at all. Actually back then when they were talking about Nathan's father and knowing that it wasn't Victor Castadine for real, Obrecht had said that he was way worse than Victor could ever be. And this is before Valentin Castadine came back on and to the viewers of GH he was notoriously known as this mysterious big badass Castadine that even had Helena shaken in her boots, which is not the Valentin Castadine that we're seeing. But, you know, whatever. I actually wish Valentine was like a scary Cassidyne. But that's another conversation. I need the answers hopefully in the next couple of months of 2018. But speaking of Valentine Cassidyne, we should probably talk about Anna and Finn and Cassandra and Valentine's story that's going on. Anna got Finn to put a chip into Cassandra's cell phone so that she could listen in on their conversations. And with that, Anna got the information that she needed to infiltrate Cassandra's lab way wherever that lab was. Unfortunately, thanks to Valentine, Cassandra discovered the chip in her phone after he threw it on the floor. He didn't know, so in his defense, you know. But first, Cassandra suspected that it was Valentine that put the chip there, and then she realized that nope, it was definitely Finn. And it looks like things are about to get crazy for both Finn and Anna. Anna is gone. I think she's been kidnapped by Cassandra. Cassandra was waiting for Finn inside of Anna's house. So let's see what 2018 has to bring for those four. Whatever it is, it can't be good. Now we can't end this video without talking about Drew and Sam and Jason. Drew is still trying to get his memories back. Kim actually gave him the CD that he gave her a long time ago to see if it would jog his memory, but it didn't. 
Drew and Sam actually intended on spending the New Year's together, but Carly had other plans. It seems that Carly is back to her scheming ways in order to get her friend Jason and her friend Sam back together again. So, she lies to Jason and tells him that Sonny needs to meet him at the Haunted Star, where she already knew that Sam and Drew were supposed to meet, and then she got someone to screw with Drew's car so that he would get delayed from going to the boat. Carly also knew that the boat would be on autopilot so that whenever it would take off, It'll take off without Drew and probably with Jason and Sam on it. And that's exactly what happened. Kim, however, did offer to drive him to the pier to meet Sam, but they were stuck in traffic, of course, because it's New Year's. Unfortunately, the boat took off without him, and Jason and Sam were stuck there together alone. And they do what they always do to pass the time. They play dominoes and tequila. It got Sam to loosen up just a little bit so that she can have a normal conversation with Jason, and it was kind of like old times, but also kind of not. I couldn't put my finger on it, but something... Something was weird about that. Listen, y'all know that I am a diehard JSAM fan. I loved JSAM like back in the beginning, and I loved them in 2009 during the reunion, and I wouldn't mind if they got back together even though I love Drew and Sam as well. I'm kind of okay with wherever the storyline goes. But the thing that Sam pointed out and that I've even pointed out in the past is that Sam is not who she was five years ago, and that is very apparent. She's not the same person she was when she was with Jason. And I'm not gonna lie, I do miss that side of Sam, but I don't know if we'll see it again. Time will tell, I guess. Anyway, by the end of that episode, I'm sure all the JSAM fans went wild because they shared a kiss just after the best flashbacks of JSAM's, like, early history. Sam dancing with Jason drunk, and Sam and Jason dancing in the rain, and then back to the boat where they're dancing and looking into each other's eyes and they lock lips. It's gonna be a messy beginning to the year for Jason and Sam and Drew. As if Drew needs another reason to hate Jason. And that's pretty much how the week was. What did you guys think of this week? Did you love it? And also, what did you guys think of this year? What were your favorite parts of the year? What were your least favorite parts? Like I said, for me, the last few months have been epic since Jason returned, and I never thought I'd say that, because I actually had a love-hate relationship with Jason for a long time before Steve Burton left. But there's something about the writing for him now that's making him more likable. I don't know if it's just because there's, like, less robotic mob version of him because there's no mob stuff going on, but we're seeing a lot of personal side to Jason. And I feel like they're really utilizing the cast so well right now, so the show is on a good all-time high for me anyway. But yeah, that's it. We're done. We're done with 2017. I guess I will see you guys next year. If you like this video, give it a big old thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you want to. I do these videos every Sunday. Once again, Happy New Year. I will see you next year.